Hello everyone, this is Ray Space and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.12 where during a recent Twitch live stream I decided to try to make a Titan lander and a reusable one. So it has to be one stage, it has to carry crew, uh, so we have room for four Kerbals. I'm using my Lynx spacecraft pod, which is a lander pod that's a reasonable mass, I think about four tons. And I started off with a Raptor engine at the bottom, but that had really high thrust to weight ratio, so I decided to replace it with a lesser methane oxygen engine. And we're using the landing legs from IsaQuest's Blue Origin lander, the Blue Moon lander pack. And I decided to actually go away from Methylox and switch to Hydrolox because the Methylox version was getting to be about 100 tons. So uh, the Hydrolox version, hydrogen and oxygen, uh, was giving me about 65-ish tons. And a Delta V map suggested that we needed about 7,500 meters per second to get off the surface of Titan. Now to land, we just use parachutes. So here I'm configuring the parachutes for Titan. And so I was hoping that 7,000, uh, I only have about 7,000 200 right now according to MechJab, but it depends on the surface pressure. For those not familiar with Titan, it is a moon of Saturn. It's the largest moon of Saturn. And Titan has uh, atmospheric pressure at the surface 50% more than that of Earth, so 1.5 atmospheres. And that's why the parachutes work just fine, uh, even though we're a pretty heavy sort of vehicle. But what I didn't account for was the atmospheric density at the surface. We'll get to that. But as you can see, even at 41 kilometers, we have a velocity, just because of the drag, of 90 meters per second. So it's really slowed us down a lot. And that should give you pause as far as how it's going to be going back up. So with the parachutes deployed, we're at 4 meters per second. So we're carrying more parachutes than we really need. Uh, but we are coming down on some sort of liquid. There is some liquid below us. I assume that's liquid methane. And so I decided to abort. And uh, I added the action group to cut the parachutes. And we are ascending, but then we hit high dynamic pressure and we can't accelerate more. I try to uh, throttle down here and we lose speed immediately and there's a vapor and feed line. So I can't throttle down either. So that's not good. Eventually we get to a point where I can relight the engines. Sorry about the lack of sound. This is the backup copy. I had an error in the recording. The game actually caused OBS to crash at one point. But anyway, we'll, we'll have sound later on in the video. But I do relight the engine. But you can see in the far dialog that the atmospheric density is above 4. It's 4.4. For Earth, it's 1.225 kilograms per meter cubed. Uh, for Titan, apparently, it's all the way at 5 at the surface. So it's got 4 times the density of Earth, even though it only has 1.5 times the pressure. And that means that it has... Four, more than four times the drag as well, and that is horrible. I checked that the numbers are correct in the config for Titan. Uh, so there's the RSS config, real solar system config for Titan. And yes, the pressure is at 1.5. The problem is the temperature. See, pressure is how much the particles of the atmosphere are bumping into things. And the density is how many particles there are in one little given cube of space. The temperature is how much energy those particles have. The more energy the particles have, the more they bump into things, the more pressure they create. But if it's cold, they have less energy and therefore less pressure per molecule in the area. So you need more molecules in the same place in order to have more pressure if you have less temperature. And it's really cold on Titan. It's about 70 Kelvin at the surface. Well, 70 Kelvin somewhere in the atmosphere and then 95 at the surface. So it's really close to the point where the methane in the atmosphere would become liquid methane. And it the, the density of the air, you see pressure, atmospheric pressure is static pressure. The dynamic pressure when we're going through the atmosphere and what's causing the drag is dependent on the density, not the static pressure. And so we get a lot of drag. It's slowing us down. I've got the engine dialog up to make sure that the ISP is good, but the engine ISP is dependent on the pressure, the static pressure. Uh, it is not dependent on the dynamic pressure. It's not dependent on drag. So the ISP of the engine is fine. 
it's the fact that we get this enormous amount of drag because the atmospheric density is more than four times that of Earth. And so I decide to try out the airship parts from Hooligan Labs because, well, if the density is so high, then we'll get a lot of benefit from trying to use balloons, basically. Uh, it'd be an airship. And so I look at the dialogue. Sorry, I've got a lot of other star systems involved here because I've got the real exoplanets mod in. That's why there's a huge list there. But at the bottom of that, you see the equilibrium altitude. That's the altitude that the airship parts are going to be able to lift us to around that body. So Titan, we can get to that altitude down there and it shows us our max buoyancy and everything. However, these are cheaty parts as I will demonstrate later on in the video. Uh, but the way it works is that we've got these buoyancy things, but really I just use the UI there and increase the buoyancy and then eventually on Earth it can't get us off the ground. And that's because, well, the atmospheric density is less than a quarter of that of Titan. However, the gravity is seven times that of Titan. So around Titan, presumably it'll be okay because yes, it's not, it's got all this density, but it's got much less of the gravity. So the balloons or airship parts will work much better to lift us up. All right, so here we're coming in and of course they create drag. I should have removed the little air brakes that I've got at the bottom there. I had the air brakes because it was un a little bit unstable and using too much RCS. So I add the air brakes so it wouldn't use so much RCS propellant. They're very light compared to the propellant that it was using up because it was wobbling around. Anyway, so, but of course with the airship parts we don't need to. The problem with the airship parts and how buoyant they make us is that we tend to bounce off the surface. So yeah, it was a little bit hard getting it steady at the bottom there and figuring out what buoyancy I should use so that we set down lightly but we don't bounce back up. So, and of course we are adding some horizontal velocity here. The horizontal speed is not where I want it to be, but eek. Okay, so alright, we are on the surface and now we just have to go back up. Right, I'm not having the Kerbals step out. Right now actually we don't have the pod anymore because I was wondering whether the Lynx spacecraft was actually causing more drag because of its uh, it's actually a pass-through one where the Kerbals can actually crawl into. So I decided to leave it off and just use a tank instead. That didn't help at all. So anyway, uh, I increased the, the airship uh, buoyancy and it is lifting us up at a rate of 54 meters per second as you can see. And we're pretty heavy right now. And our delta V is still like, you know, uh, above 6,500. Uh, you know, it, it depends on where we are in the atmosphere or how much delta V we've got. Uh, but in space, it's like 7,000 plus. And we can see the drag there on in the far dialogue. And right now it's low because we're not going very fast, but once we light the engine. Now, here is a miss on my part. Of course, we would like to decouple off the balloons the or the airship parts because they're creating a lot of drag. Uh, unfortunately, I ran out of time at this point, but that would be the next step would be to decouple off those airship parts. And so we don't actually get anywhere. And this is just a very good example of how the Delta V map totally lied to me. Uh, I mean, it definitely takes more than 7,500 meters per second any way you look at it. If we were just using engine thrust from the surface, it, there's no way 7,500 would get you into orbit around Titan. And Titan, people are a little bit overly optimistic about Titan given the atmospheric density. I think people look at the atmospheric pressure and don't realize that the density is that high because of the temperature. So this is a PSA for those who are trying to do stuff around Titan. It's really bad as far as the atmospheric density. The Delta V maps are completely wrong. And uh, the actual size of the airship that you need in order to lift this lander up is that. Uh, well, that's according to a calculation Pekka did. I haven't double checked that calculation. I'll trust Pekka on that. Uh, but it, we were talking about 57 thousand meters cubed or 57 million liters in volume and so that's a pretty substantial airship and that jives with what you might expect an airship that can carry about 65 tons would be the size of so yeah um it's hard
so Titan, Titan, a lot more difficult than people think it is because I think a lot of people look at the atmospheric pressure and go, 1.5 is not that bad. We can deal with 1.5, especially if you land higher up. Uh, but the density is actually much greater, and that's bitten me a few times before. And uh, but unfortunately, those were years ago, and I forgot all about it. And I, t I looked at the 1.5 atmospheric pressure again, and go, well, it's not that bad. And then when I got there, it sucked. So yeah, uh, I'll try decoupling off the the. I think of them as balutes for some reason, uh, the airship parts, and maybe making a custom airship part just using the Hooligan Labs plugin. Uh, but that'll be for later. For now, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.